The first thing you always want to look at when you open up Hawkeye is the very top left of the screen. Here you will see the version number. The version number will either be a 4 or a 5 followed by a date. If your version number starts with 4, that means you are still using WinServe 2 for your dailies and BHAs. If your version number starts with a 5, that means your WinServe 2 functionality is integrated into Hawkeye. The next thing you want to keep your eye on is your database path. This tells you the location of your Hawkeye database. Keep in mind that Hawkeye databases are double extension databases. So if you need to rename your database, do not change anything after the .hawkeye.mdf. Both of those extensions are a critical part of the database functioning correctly. Underneath your ribbon icons, you have two main panels. These main panels are resized by this blue bar which you can hold down the left mouse button on and drag to resize. The tabs along this row will control what is shown in these two panels. The program typically starts off with 3D on your left and a 2D view on the right. So the first thing you want to do is open the data tree on the left to see what is contained in the current database. Whatever is displayed in the data tree is everything that is contained in your currently open database. On the right, I'll click on 3D to open up the 3D space. When you first install the program, your 3D space may not have this color. If you want to get it to a medium gray, go to settings, click on BG color, then click on define custom colors, pick a gray on the right here, click add to custom colors, then select it and hit OK. Also uncheck this visible box. Click home to get out of the settings. The data tree is organized by hierarchy. So you have an oil company or field, and then under that you have any number of projects denoted by the blue letter P. And then under every project you have a pad or structure denoted by the red dot icon. Underneath every pad you have wellheads. Wellheads are denoted by a little Derek icon. And then under every wellhead you have two kinds of curves, work curves and proposal curves. If you notice under slot 4, I have two plans or proposals and one work curve. The data tree will also contain targets, which include lease lines, hard lines, and conventional one-dimensional targets. The 3D space is navigated in several ways. First, to pan around, you would hold down the left mouse button and move around the mouse. To go up and down a curve, you use the mouse wheel. If you want smooth, fast scrolling, you need to get a Logitech hyperfast scrolling mouse with the weighted metal wheel. To zoom in and out, you hold down the right mouse button and use the mouse wheel at the same time. When scrolling up and down with the mouse wheel, you may want to slow down so you can change your step down to a lower number. The step signifies how many feet your look at point moves per mouse click. If you need to speed things up, you can change the step up higher. The 3D space in Hawkeye will only follow one curve at a time. In order for Hawkeye to know which curve you want to follow, you need to keep an eye on this button up here. This is your mode. There are two modes, work mode and proposal mode. Currently I'm in the work mode and it is signified by the letter W on this button as well as the W's on my cursor. The work mode means I'm following my current work curve. If you notice on my data tree, I actually have three different work curves that I could be following. However, the one in bold is my current work curve. So when I'm in work mode, I'm following this particular curve. If I want to follow my current plan, I can hit the Z key or click the mode button and it would switch me to my current proposal curve. Notice in the data tree that I have two proposal curves, but the one in bold is the one that I'm following. If for whatever reason I want to follow plan two rather than plan four, I can right click on plan two and select set as current proposal curve. That makes plan two my current proposal. So when I'm in proposal mode, I'll be following this proposal as opposed to the other one. Again, if I want to go back and follow a work curve, I click the Z key or click the mode button. Likewise, if I need to follow another work curve, for example, one of these offsets, I would right click on it and select set as current work curve. Now when I do that, it's going to make the well head of that work curve the current referenced wellhead or slot and that of course changes all of the local offsets but not the geodetics for every wellhead. 
to get back to my slot four, I can just right click on work curve and select set as current work curve. It'll make slot four my reference well head again. You'll notice these sites. The sites are turned on and off with these checkboxes down here. There's one site for the work curve and one site for the proposal curve. These are handy visual tools that you can use to quickly determine proximity to other wells. If you need to customize the size or color, you right click on the site and select site editor. Or you can click down here on this button to pull up the site editor. Here you have the two types that you can edit as well as the two colors that represent each of the alternating bands that you can edit as well. If you choose white for one of your colors, it will come across in the 3D space as transparent. So if you choose both colors as white, you will get a fully transparent site. You can also hit the space bar continuously to cycle through on and off for both sites. Next thing I'm going to do is turn on the 3D space on my left and then turn on surveys on the right and then resize. The survey panel will show you all of the surveys of whichever curve is selected and that may not always be the curve that you're following. So for example, I'm currently following work curve here, but if I left click on this curve here, I will see the surveys for this curve, even though I'm continuing to follow work curve in the 3D space. If I want to go back and look at the surveys for work curve, I can left click on it and get those surveys. The columns here are customizable. You can not only drag and drop to reorder the columns, but you can also right click on the colored title bar here and select survey grid manager. Here you can add any of the available columns here to the currently displayed columns or remove any of these columns if you don't need to look at them. There are further customizations for color and size here. And once you get it to the way you like it, you click apply and okay. One thing of note here is comments. Comments for a particular survey are entered, edited, or deleted here in this column. This is the only place where you can add, edit, or delete survey comments. If you have a comment in here and you wish to delete it, your best practice is to select the data and hit backspace rather than delete. If you hit the delete key while trying to delete a comment, there is a chance that you will accidentally delete the survey itself. There is no undo button in Hawkeye, so you have to be careful about this. All of the fields in black are editable, whereas all of the fields not in black are calculated for you. Hawkeye also has two kinds of 2D views, the top view and the vertical section or side view. A very important function on these is the reset function. To reset the view, you hold down the left mouse button and draw to the left and release. That will reset the view to fit the scale of the window. To pan, you hold down the right mouse button and drag your mouse around. To zoom in and out, you use the wheel. To move labels around, you hold down the left mouse button and you drag the label. The vertical section plane for the entire structure or pad can be controlled here. This is the only place where you can change that globally for the pad. However, if you want to change the vertical section plane for a particular well, you right click on that well in the data tree and select edit curve data and then type in your VSP here. Your vertical section plane will affect the vertical section calculation as displayed in your reports. Finally, there is the proximity or center to center scan. I'm going to turn on the 3D on the left and then click proximity on the right. In order to activate the proximity scan, you have to check this box that says calculate proximity. You also have to choose one of these distance types. True distance is going to be your closest approach distance, and that's what we'll use. We'll turn off normal distance for now. Then by moving up and down the 3D space, it will recalculate all center to center scans to the other wells. Another thing to keep an eye on here is your scale or scanning radius. If your scanning radius is too low, it won't pick up any curves. So I will turn the scanning radius up just high enough to pick up a couple of curves that may be of concern to me, or if I need to scan all the way around, I will click the 10,000. Notice here is also where you can change the threshold of inclination between magnetic and high side. This value will determine the inclination threshold at which these columns here go from north, south, east, west to up, down, left, right. If 
For more detailed help, you can go to the Help tab and then click on the Quick Start Guide, which is a short PDF that has all of the basics, the User's Guide, which is a 300 or so page user's manual, or visit our website, hawkeye3d.com, and click on the Support page to access our YouTube channel that contains several dozen short videos on specific functions.